The purpose of this video is to show you a few tips that hopefully will be helpful to you as you work on QuickBooks projects or um, tests that will be coming up shortly. So here are a couple things I just want to talk about. You've been introduced to them in your textbook, but hopefully this will kind of remind you of some of the nice things that are out there. First off, the ability to drill down through reports, how to find a customer, vendor, item, employee, anything like that, or a transaction, how to quickly locate one of those. The recent icon and how that can be useful to you. And then also I want to talk very briefly about clearing the cache if QuickBooks is just misbehaving for you. First off, let me remind you of the drill down feature that QuickBooks has in its reports. Let's suppose, for example, you have an income statement or profit and loss as we call it. And you're comparing yours against the solutions that are given for the project and yours don't match up. Well, a good place to start is to drill down into any account that does not agree with the solutions and see what's in that account. So for example, maybe I had something that was off in my interest paid account. So if I click that, it will drill down and take me to the detail items that make up that individual balance. And I can go back and review each one of those items and make sure they look correct. What if I look at this one right here and it appears incorrect? I can simply point to this item, click, and it will drill me down to the actual transaction itself and I can view the detailed transaction. So from any of your reports, you have this drill down capability where you can go from the report down to the details that make up that item and then drill down one step further to the actual transactions. Next, let's talk about the search icon in QuickBooks. And it's nothing fancy, glamorous. It's just the magnifying glass that we're used to seeing. But boy, can it be helpful to us sometime. So what we can do is we can search, for example, for a customer name, a vendor name. And I know there are other ways to get to it, but to me, sometimes this is a quick one. For example, what if I am looking for a transaction that related to someone named Ryan? I don't remember any more about it, but it related to Ryan. Well, if I just type in the word Ryan, it will pull up any transactions or any vendor, customer, employees, and so forth that relate to Ryan. And then I can point to those and click and drill on down to them. I can also search for a particular amount. What if I'm looking for a transaction and all I can remember is that it's for $99? Well, I can type in the amount and it pulls up any transactions I have out here for that particular amount. Quick way to get to it. There's also down here an advanced search, which can come in handy, where you can specify multiple criteria. So here's where we started out, but maybe I wanted one for a certain amount. I only wanted it if it was a bill or a bill credit or an invoice or so forth. Um, I can specify contacts, reference numbers, amounts, or accounts as well. You can also set up a date range if you knew it was in a certain month then. So this is the advanced search, and I think this can be helpful to you also. Another icon that I find helpful and often overlooked is the recent icon. So for example, what if I wanted to look at um, an invoice that I've already entered? I can't remember the details of it, so I don't really want to go to search. So if I go as if I'm creating a new invoice in this case, and this icon here on the top left, and it's not only the invoice screen, it's on a lot of other transaction screens. If I click that, it will pull me up a list of recent invoices. If you've had our Sage class before, you've noticed that Sage has an option for a list, which will pull up all transactions of a certain type. Well, this is the same idea as that. So it will pull up recent ones. We have the option down here to view more, and it will show you further back in time then. So I like this one to me, that's pretty handy. If I'm, I know it's an invoice, but I don't remember the details of it, that's kind of a quick way to go look at it also. Finally, I want to mention 
that sometimes QuickBooks mm, just gets a little bit confused, it appears. And if something is suddenly just not working on your QuickBooks screen, what I have found is the best option is to clear the cache. And that can be different depending upon your browser. In my case here, I'm using Chrome. If I click on the three dots at the top right side, I can then go to History, History, and then I can tell it to clear the browsing history. And if I tell it to do it for all times, there's a pretty good chance that that is going to make QuickBooks get over what issue it was having. Uh, might not hurt to reboot after you do that, although I won't say that that's a necessity. There's one more thing I want to mention also. I was about to forget that, but that has to do with looking for a report. So, I don't know if you're like me. When I'm looking for a report, I tend to come here and scroll down and go looking for that report, which is honestly not very efficient. But right here we have another search box. And what if, for example, I wanted a report that dealt with terms, that showed me sales terms? If I just type in there a few keywords, it will then pull up a list of the items that meet, that include that word, and I can go right to that report. And I think over time you'll find that's a whole lot easier than scrolling through the whole page and searching for that one elusive report that you can't seem to find otherwise. Hope these are helpful to you and will make troubleshooting a little bit easier as you work on projects and reports.